Nothing seems more appropriate today than thinking community. Nothing more necessary, demanded and heralded by a situation that joins in a unique epochal knot the failure of all communisms with the misery of new individualisms. Nevertheless, nothing is further from view. Nothing so remote, repressed and put off until later to a distant end in this cipherable horizon. So two artists nobody. have just arrived to the location but there is nobody around us. We saw Sasha Kurmas when we were approaching the place and he was here uh, already. But he told us that he's going to find the bathroom and that he will come back. But he, it's like 20 minutes already have passed, but he has never came back. So he dumped us officially. And even Dibiendu, our main uh, star of the evening, who will be showing his movie and who has the movie on his laptop, uh, he's not here as well. And it's already half past nine. We agreed to come at nine. But yeah, there is no one. So, uh, my name is Ilya Kovalenko. And I'm Oskar. Yeah, so we are from Ukraine, we arrived from Kiev. Our project's title is Restaging Participation. So, we brought this nice stuff with us to have some cookies and snacks there's tea a huge amount of equipment like a portable projector a, a bluetooth speaker no, the is oh the beyond is coming cool. before coming here we like did the uh, and before applying for this residency we did a small research of what uh, have happened already here in from Trilat or during the previous festival, which took place in one of the keeps in 2017. And uh, yeah, so when we started to research, we kind of figured out that a lot of things are a lot of uh, massive instruments, in instruments to, um, to involve people to produce this participation. We are already used. I thought I was late. Yeah, you were late. You were late. <laughs> I know I'm late, but we are the audience. Audience. I mean, we saw Sasha Kurmas, but he told like us that he's going to find the bathroom, and then he will come back immediately, and he definitely dumped us. No. Let's do the setup. And I think uh, yeah, no one's coming basically. Yeah. Well, so. We will do it anyway. Yeah, we do it anyway. I mean, it's our. Yeah, because we have a tea and there's some seats. You have to be And you and your film. Our approach was that at first we visited. Yeah, made a map and then we visited all locations where the previous workshops took place in order to reconnect with the place and to see what happened there and if there are any traces of previous workshops uh, still uh, discernible. Uh, so there was a breakfast in the market, so it's also a way to... Barbecue in the yeah. yard. Bar Barbecue in the yard, screened in the yard, uh, also cleaning of the yards and all of these certain locations in the city. So yeah, basically what we decided that we cannot propose anything unique, unique kind of, because everything more or less has already happened. Maybe we can uh, suggest something unique, but it will be in the same logic of all these projects it, and it couldn't be different. So we decided because everything we explore, that could happen yeah. already happened more or less and therefore what can we do? Let's explore, let's see what happened. Anyway, let's just take the uh, laptop projector and try to run it. Okay, Yeah, one person, our first. <laughs> no, we saw Sasha who told that he'll come back and then never came back. And liar! Yeah, yeah, he dumped us in the end. And then the other part of this. Uh, of our research was uh, uh, re-necklace. 
Hi. Uh, so we are doing a small introduction about this reenactment. I was telling about the two years ago there was a workshop in the framework of the same festival, the same session 2017. They picked uh, three courtyards in uh, different places, but in the center of the city. And here they had screenings, but also they had some workshops and uh, a lot of steam things. And yeah, just as an introduction, we are not reenacting everything, basically, and so we decided to reenact the movie screening. We also tried to invite the local residents, but no one came. So it's, yeah, it's interesting when you see it from outside, you're like, oh, maybe it's just a, like a, a death proje dead project and it's just a forced by artists from outside. And then when you're inside, you can understand the maybe struggles of the person who was involved. Yeah, yeah, it's connected to a lot of kind of factors, which it's really hard to evaluate and somehow define. And therefore, definitely it's not bad to try, you know, sometimes to activate, but I feel resonate, resonate, I think, only under certain circumstances. And it's also might get this impact or they not expected actual outcome, you know. Sometimes you come and then just improvise. And actually, uh, I would say that they did either they did very well or uh, there isn't such a big problem with community. Like Ivan Frankis is pretty much well community, and uh, communities are strong, and they do care about the space mm -hmm. and. It's uh, it's like nice. Seems oh at least in this area because we are in the mm -hmm. very center. Yeah, and so how we can unite and motivate people uh, around a uh, common project if they for tens of years were living next to each other but uh, not really always want to have a productive dialogue with each other. <laughs> And with every reenactment, this participatory kind of thing was always a bit different, you know, sometimes there were random people, sometimes there were only people that we invited, yeah, sometimes we interacted with the environment, sometimes we didn't interact with the environment, sometimes participants from previous workshops came and told us and shared their like um, opinions about the previous workshops or about the initial workshops that they were, that they were part of. And for this, we were lucky in this particular reenactment because one of the initial participants actually came. Who is he? This is a participant of the previous workshop. Oh. So he came and he told us about what they were doing during the workshop. He brought the artifacts like this. Uh, like that they did during the workshops. If this space is public, but it's not kind of defined and recognized as public space, then there is a danger that people like the real estate developers would say, for instance, that this place is not used. They would say like, it's not a really, really proper public space and, we'll, and, and therefore we can take it and build something instead of it because it's, yeah, it's not public. And then in order to kind of uh, oppose that, you have to come here and then create certain strategy for this place, how it can be developed as public space, but also only in, in order to save it from the developer. Because then if you kind of recognize the space or you kind of formulate or put the space in this kind of framework that it's a public space with a certain plan of development or whatever, but only then it's kind of become recognized as a public space, you know. How a group of people with uh, different professions uh, different interests and with the help of uh, the collective creativity, uh, creativity methodology can together produce decisions about uh, a city or a local object. The main object of the research uh, became this uh, island on the German lake. Usually all project works are done 
from uh, offices. But Sela, who is the leader of the workshop, but Sela thought, what will happen if we will if we'll do projects when we are staying on the object? And this way, uh, the project Natura Camp emerged, the art uh, camp. So yeah, and then there are some comments from the leader of location, Sela Fernandez. And then it's a quote. I was uh, very satisfied with the location. The uh, German lake is a unique uh, place, it's a special place, and the discussions between the participants and the activities uh, that they were doing went beyond my expectation. Every decision, considering the uh, local, the city space, uh, cannot appear out of nowhere. They should be based in the collective experience. She wanted to make this workshop here because of, uh, in order to come up with some other plan, uh, how this island island could be developed, but not, yeah or not. And yeah, so they stayed in this, on this island for one week, in, uh, for five days in camps. We stayed uh, for one night uh, on the island. Our tower is there, but we came from this way. How come? Yeah, because yeah. we, we, because we, 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 we we went like around and then from this side. There is no road from this side? Uh, yeah, because you need to go through the river and then again through to the island. Oh. It's like a, some several okay. bridges and this only one. Okay. It's okay. closer to take everything. For me it was very interesting process and when you are in this process you can uh, rethink what you already thought about this uh, activity and it's a, it's a possibility to understand it better and from new angle of view and at the same time you can see it yes, through the place of the original participant and uh, to see maybe clear its value of this uh, event. Don't go to the lake. <laughs> what did he say? Don't go to the lake? Uh, yeah, his friend had a... Uh, yeah, he went to get a fish inside the lake and then he also had a scratch in his uh, leg or somewhere. And when after he went out, like he spent uh, two months in the hospital. Oh. And then because of this yeah, bacteria, some left... Like, I don't know who just ate, but... Yeah, left us For us, for me, I think what was interesting that uh, I think it was um, because we were not just thinking about participation and we were not like trying to evaluate it, not rational, empirical way, when we kind of collect some materials or you see, okay, what the project successful or not, and so then you can kind of make the judgment of whether the project reached its goals or not. I'm going to see the, how this landscape was, was explored. Yeah. It's crazy, it's a place of former workshop, you know, this was the garden, there is the garden. And then, and before, like, five days ago or three days ago we were here, it was really super nice. And so now it's just, it was devastated. There was this project uh, uh, about a city community garden and then, like, some curator uh, arrived uh, to one of Ankivsk and then they, in a remote district, together with the uh, with the local residents, they did this community guidance. When you arrive, you see that the present the garden is uh, this community garden is abandoned. But on the same, in the same time, a person who gives you interview who is a local activist, who is a local resident, she tells that actually this workshop was quite nice, quite interesting. And even though they were active, or some people were active before, still this workshops kind of became an uh, incentive or you know a, a push to even. Have more participation, more activity in the area. Maybe you don't see anything special around you, but actually, you see this pillar, there is a light. And before that, there was no light. There is now light, there is now short grass, there is some trees there. And then, but I mean, on my level of whatever, I can say, like, okay, maybe it's not even like a improvement, maybe it's better just to keep it as it was before. And I mean, then we have, we might have different uh, concepts of what is 
progress or about this improvement. But for us, it was more not about the judgments, but more about trying to understand what was happening. And why? But yeah, we tried to rebuild this garden as just in some sort of act, a strange symbolic act. And when we came there, like local children started to join joining us. We told that Diviano is super uh, famous movie director from India, and then if they want to be in his movie, they have to help us. Uh, what's the name of the movie? It's called We Are Never Alone. Ah, мы не колу на сами. We are never alone. Мы не мы не колу на сами. Like one guy was even like really calling his friends and saying like, okay man, come here, you know, they're like, they're shooting a movie, so if you want to get in the movie, come immediately and take part in this. And so they, all these kids from the whole area, I think, the whole neighborhood arrived to help us. Basically, the space wasn't abandoned in a certain way, so you don't know what was what, being there before, and then you don't really pay attention, you just want to find this place where the workshop took place and yeah, see but maybe it's not it's still there, important but, to yeah, find this place. It's, actually important it's like more important place. to see what happened around this event. Just initiated some processes. Yeah. Can you uh, cut bread properly? Yeah, it's just uh, This action, this act of social experiment is in a way performative because you come somewhere and then you do certain action which is maybe not really done in this place or not used to be done in this place otherwise. And then you kind of perform it maybe again and again with a consistency, and it becomes like a certain new situation that you create by doing this action, even though it's uh, it's not usual practice, you know. And this, in a way, because it challenges this uh, certain social customer protocol. Mm -hmm. But that's the same thing with this reenactment on the market that we did the breakfast. Like if you do something in one place, you kind of kind of reprogram the place in a way. And then also Diva when we were doing the workshops. During the workshop, when we were eating, we were also they, they told the same thing. Like, can, guys, can you imagine if you come here every time, every day, and then reenact it every day? What kind of influence it will, mm, it will have on the place? You should make this like a method. Ilya and Olya yeah. method yeah, of participation, uh, participatory <laughs> project. But I think when you put yourself in uh, yeah. that position of uh, being... Uh, being in that place, going through that, being confronted with things that you cannot, you know, yeah. describe in the project, it's really, really good. It's, it's a new way of critique. It's a new way, but it's a, it's a much uh, more um, empathetic uh, critique, because you can feel like if something goes wrong and you put yourself again in that situation, you can understand maybe better why it went wrong because yeah. I think in a theoretical way it's easy to be very like um, critical very easily. I mean, you can also ask people around whether they are, what do they think about it? I can yeah I'll go. I don't know if I want to shoot them yeah. or not, but I can just. Uh... Mm. Ладно, в принципе, понятно.
Nobody so now we have opinions. About, yeah. Everyone is happy. I wonder if some of them are here also two years ago. Yeah, as you said, the, uh, one, one uh, old uh, woman, she said that it's perfect that uh, they made this new market because before they stay like they put everything on the, yeah, on the road happy. and now they're really happy because they have this new place to sell everything and uh, here almost all uh, people from near, uh, near villages. But also some people told that we are foreigners and that they consider us foreigners and so for them they really don't know, I mean for one maybe we, yeah maybe it's normal. some kind of custom or thing that we are doing and then mm -hmm. they don't feel themselves in a proper position to come and offend us, you know, saying that we can do this. That they don't uh, don't want judge because they think that maybe it's okay for you. Yeah. And one and one woman said that it's okay. We also can eat here. <laughs> I kind of noticed that we also um, caused a little confusion and problem when uh, one lady took a food from us and she's been bullied from another ladies that you're taking food from some other people and they, they they're just having their dinner or lunch and why would, did you do that we kind of caused the situation and the other people were like shy or not sure to to be invited um, to our table it's not that like sweet and easy, so you have to know how to arrange this stuff. So, so you think we just, cause some sort of disruption? Uh, surely, it's it's not neither bad or good. It's just what happened, and we couldn't know that. Like uh, we we couldn't uh, think of everything in advance, of course. But that's what we noticed, and we have to make our conclusions after that. These people in the market, they have like cre clear uh, formula how they work, and they have market relations. They sell something, you, when you pay for it, you get something, you get food, and it's easy to understand that this is uh, clear about like living, and it's some basic um, need for for every human being. And uh, on the contrary, us, uh, we don't produce anything really very basic and needed and for many people here we may seem like uh, people that don't do anything at all some people that are just having fun and not uh, uh, taking life seriously and it's of course an uh, elitary like thing to do participate in the economical life of this place for this short moment so in that sense you don't feel like you're too much of an invader but they have like clear clear things to do market relations and we don't and that, that causes our not understanding each other in a proper way but often you know there's this kind of tension in the market where people yell and want to sell and so it always creates this kind of uh, chaotic but pressuring atmosphere sometimes, but that's mainly like, like big markets where there's like an endless kind of rows of food and, and people trying to c compete with, it, with each other. And of course here I think the fact that it's kind of closed up, very small, I don't know, makes it kind of a easier, kind of simple way of uh, yeah, integrating. It makes it easier to, to be here and at the same time enjoy um, something as simple as eating and sharing. I, I would say like uh, uh, 20, 30 years ago it were mostly like only a fancy restaurant to do this kind of thing when you can pick a fish you want to be cooked for, uh, for what, which you want to be prepared for you and uh, this was mostly like really elitary thing to have so it's nice that it, it's getting more common and open. And somehow it is not a full market if, we, if I would realize oh fuck we're actually taking the space of some but people who actually need the space to sell, then it starts to become uncomfortable if we have to claim space from someone else. But thankfully, we, we don't have to do it because it's somehow empty enough. There's this space that's available, etc. So I don't know. The things made it mm -hmm. uh, possible. But it's true that a, a few parameters different could make the world less pleasant, more confrontational with everyone. My questions were more like, what do we actually do as an interaction in this market? So, uh, as artists, or like, uh, the, the participative um, action. It's not always possible, I think, to make something artificially, you know, to try to 
activate some space, you know, in an artificial way. Sometimes society just does it, you know. And this social kind of ritual, who teach people to do this, but somehow it works. Yeah, it's strange. And then sometimes, definitely, I think it's possible to activate some place with some sort of form of interaction with this place, uh, which will become sustain sustainable in a way. But it also has to have certain resonance. You have to have certain basis for that, so people would respond to this activation, uh, kind of. So, uh, I'm really happy to present this unfinished construction that called Parazet, as you everybody knows. So, um, it's not really ready yet, but uh, as Dima promised, uh, till Thursday or till Friday everything will be like will be done. Uh, firstly, I would love to say thank you for the amazing team that I find by Metalab, like a main constructor and architect of the project, and actually the guy who created this amazing sculpture, it's a, uh, Dima Starchuk, yeah, that guy. Also, he has like a really amazing team who support him, like, let's say, uh, architectural assistant. Actually, there is also more people, but three, three guys that, that like work more, most of the time for the building. So it's uh, Ilya Bugaychuk, Oleg Osipov and Yuri Tsemko. Like my plan uh, to use this space like an exhibition space for the future. From my point of view, it should be kind of space when artists like a, that I can invite or some local artists that are really interested in the space, they can also propose their work just to present something inside. So it, it, from one hand, it's an exhibition space for local and international scene. Uh, from another hand, it also can be used like a space um, for people who just want to spend the night or some have maybe someone want to have a sex or someone want to drink or maybe do something something nice can you tell us more about the reaction of about neighbors it was a trouble it was uh, uh, like first of all we have some conflict with the two guys who live there when they start to think about this tree like a space for the house I didn't find someone who responsible for the for the uh, for the tree so i asked some people around but nobody says that it's like somehow like property of someone so we make this uh, like official statement and send this letter to local uh, city administration about to ask about permission they say like yeah sure you can use it no problem so when the guys start to build in the second day we have kind of fights um, between uh, these two neighbors and us, like a team. And uh, also neighbors called to police and police came and say like, yeah, we don't believe that this permission is real. We should to check if it's original one. But Dima, like this Jesus, like amazing guy who fix all travels, he somehow make a deal with the neighbors. If neighbors, uh, help like, like, like don't care about this construction he will uh, help to fix this balcony so the neighbors was set happy and said like okay it's deal it's works we agree and another uh, point for agreement it was also to clean to clean the space yeah my role I was uh, I, uh, like a guy who prayed this idea so I was a starting point for this project that's all my role. And another role, I want to make a kind of life for this uh, house for the future. So for the next two years, I want to find some artists. When he built his house, tree house, you know, mm -hmm. did he go around, did he ask people around whether they wanted to have this tree house or why this exact spot, why he decided that in this spot there should be tree house. It's also like he didn't go, he didn't provide, make any survey, whatever, you know, talk to people what spot would be better maybe. The last project may activate more kind of interaction, even though he wants 
to people to interact with this three house you know? because it was a kind of uh, statement from the festival they say we should work in the rear in the neighborhood around from Prile. it's because I love this tree yeah it was just a relation with the tree it was not really a relation why do you tell love tree oh yes I love tree between me and three? Yes. I mean, on one hand, I want to be critical. It's his decision, his choice, and maybe it's also sometimes interesting. It's also may sometimes produced with unexpected results, which we never expected, and which actually might happen only in this sort of situation, because circumstance. Because otherwise, if some urban planners or, um, or urban developers like would be doing this, they would do all of the surveys. They would so they would try to plan. Uh, and then they would try to get to some certain expected result, whereas like Sasha did his thing, and maybe it can bring something unexpected, you know. So I think it's also have this uh, certain value, you know, that he did this act the way he did this act, actually. In my artistic practice, I always do some a lot of illegal stuff, actually. Mm-hmm. So for me, this work, I, I have a dream to make it like without permission, without nothing, but it, somehow it was impossible, so we should to find kind of safe way for everyone who works for the, for the construction, also for the festival, who somehow care about this project to make it like, to make it possible to realize this project. So for me, I, I, like, this, like this, this space in this house, it's kind of like, uh, like a graffiti, like, like my attitude to graffiti, because my background is like graffiti art. So I did a lot of, uh, in the public space, like a graffiti writer. So I never ask about permission, I just do whatever I want, and I don't care about opinion of neighbors, of context, it's like really not important for me. For me, important just to realize my idea. And in this project, it was kind of also, I have this kind of the same feeling. I just want to make something mm-hmm. not really safe, maybe not really legal, but somehow it's legal, but at the other hand, we have this conflict with the guys. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. yeah, somehow I'm, I'm fine with this like permission and to mm-hmm. make it like to do it in like a legal way. So for me it was important to have a windows because it's an exhibition space. I would love to have some kind of part that can be visible from the outside because for me it was important if I put some kind of artwork inside, it would be cool that people that passing by the street, they can see what is going on. I, I really like that this project will have some kind of another life after this festival. So probably I will make some kind of uh, Instagram with the, with the title of the space. I think it has potential to become a landmark. People can say, you know, near the tree house. I would love if it happens like like that, it will be cool. But I don't know, actually, because sometimes people love to destroy something. That I somehow can also understand this kind of uh, energy of destruction. So if one, someone one was born in this house, it will be also kind of also nice. There are also two... Uh, perspectives maybe it can be more, more than e- two. expanded by people community or yeah. maybe it will be dismantled on people's needs because there are some details which can they use for you mean windows or what windows, windows like wood the or something maybe it or it will or, or disappear or will be expanded or connected to this balcony or something so you mean connected to the, the real the balcony yeah. like a bridge like between a bridge. Yeah. maybe why not <laughs> It sounds like a paradise. If if someone does that, it will be super cool. Yeah, to make a bridge between house and balcony. Yeah, and then in five years they will build a real estate, like in building development for this place. And maybe maybe you can then no, offer, offer, offer this. this. If we start adding things, then there will be no end of it. Yeah, but <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing. I think it will be cool. I think that we should keep this like till next edition of the festival. And after ne- in the next edition of the festival, we... Probably we can deconstruct them like uh, this this house and present all activities that happens during these two years. That's the plan. Yeah. What you can do with that stuff? It's also I have also the same. But uh, it's uh, called pollution. To put things uh, that stays also is called pollution. Yes. Yes. So it's not. Uh, so it's not automatically this, the, the not thing a, that uh, is staying yes. is something which yes. is good. It's also yes. a possible yes. pollution Are and you? contamination. Yes. So 
uh, when you're saying that things which are disappearing are uh, immediately uh, classified as a husband and a no, wife. Both <laughs> things are can be classified as shit. Anything is, can be shit. Uh, things that is permanent doesn't mean it's more valuable. Of course, it doesn't mean. What you said it. it. You said it like I this. Say it like an like uh, not abstract. It is very literal. No. To use abstract, you said it very literal. You know, let's see it. It's not one versus another. I was not saying. Uh, ah, yeah. Me. Uh, I mean, like, if, if you want. So, yeah, let's go, guys. Okay. Let's go, guys. They will follow you. Bye bye. See you. Bye bye. Thank you. Yeah, so then we were camping, and then we had breakfast, and then we arrived back to the crew lab. So. What is this? This is an artifact for our exhibition. <laughs> I don't know, and that's basically our presentation. And uh, tomorrow we'll open an exhibition. Yeah, we will open it during the day. At first. Yeah, at first. Yeah. It's kind of this fascination with uh, understanding what do we mean by the other when we have a community and who how is the one who is not included. Who, yes, exactly. So that's kind of the starting point. Earlier, you were planning to have the exhibition inside from Pilar in Parasolka, but then you moved out. Um, is it a sign of protest or um, so frustration? How would you define it? Well, for me, it was pretty frustration. The process of belonging maybe a very comes from a very like uh, personal problem that I have that I have the impression it's always something for me very complicated to understand to what when do you belong to what? Even yeah, if you do something out of frustration, it also can become a protest, like a pro like gesture of protest, even though it may be silent protest, but then still can be by some people, for instance, who entered my game came to this exhibition, they. So it is a gesture of protest in the first place, even though for me it was more from confusion uh, kind of, and for, uh, from frustration. So, so somehow for me, understanding the community, because it is also, of course, in the professional practice and cultural practice, something that I come along all the time, but at the same time, don't really, like, don't feel it is something that can be fixed, while people speak about it as if it's a fixed thing, a fixed object, made me really doubt or question it criticize it but at the same time I'm lacking the background for it so mm -hmm. that's where it starts like surrounding myself with the um, with with texts we are part of the festival but we don't want to be like in the physical part of this festival because for us also problematic this uh, differences between uh, what we discussed all these months about the unclear future and the the possibilities to to create a space and to include all opinions and all stakeholders. Yeah, but one opinions. day, yeah, yeah, but in one day, kind of one day you wake up, you come to the festival, and then you see this mock up which sends this separate room, you know, this plan that okay, the world will look like this. That shows shows us that everything already decided and the future already clear and the our discussion like have no sense. And even though maybe now it's uh, not realistic or maybe, uh, but but you don't know, but then what concerns me the most, the division is already formed. Hi, Hello. please join us. It's not, <laughs> we're oh, doing yeah, the we're reading the session. I'm <laughs> <laughs> interested. I will uh, give you the reader. So, 
I selected here the starting point of this residency that I've been conducting for one month and a text that has stuck to me in my mind for the last more than year, a year, trying to grasp it and trying to understand it because it kind of reversed the idea of what is a community, what is the communitas, and it goes back to, in philosophical terms, the origin of what it means and turns it upside down to, in contrast to what usually circulates around the idea of community as something very positive, something of uh, belonging, something that is uh, bringing people around a common object or a common place or something, a property that is uh, shared and that is authentic and essential. How, how do you explain their vision? I mean, why was it so frustrating? Because this is a very, I think, simple vision. And it doesn't include all the all these people who now still works uh, work at Prim Privat and uh, even those people who who make a festival and uh, who involved in this festival. I think this uh, this project um, expect that all these people couldn't be there. After the truth is that these conceptions, so the conception about the political philosophy that thinks that the community has a wider sub subjectivity, just to put a bit of context. So the truth is that these conceptions are united by the innate assumption that community is a property belonging to subjects that join them together, a comuna, an attribute, a definition, a predicate that qualifies them as belonging to the same totality, in insieme, or as a substance that is produced by their union. Uh, the communization of social relationships uh, occurs if and uh, insofar as the uh, orientation uh, of social behavior. Uh, whether in the individual case, uh, on the average or in the idea type, uh, is based on a sense of solidarity. As a result of emotional uh, or traditional attachment uh, of uh, partic participants. Uh, that uh, this possession uh, might refer about uh, all to territory doesn't change uh, since uh, at all. Uh, since territory is uh, defined by the category of appropriation uh, as the originary matrix of uh, every other property that follows. Definitely what's happening right in the world connects like also this production that is still there, this industrial production of these uh, gasometers. And uh, so it's not included in this vision. Uh, also what is happening now, because if you approach this mock-up, you look in the windows and then you see, okay, here's parasolica, what you see in this window, just some office tables or something like that. You see, they like, you're looking other, you look into other windows and then you see like, for instance, this place, this, um, this room, this concert hall, where Tiana and we had these presentations. And if you look into these windows, then you see there, like, I don't know, I don't remember exactly what you see, but it's that part, I think, was a hotel and also loft apartments or something like that. So, and then we try to find, okay, where is the production there, like in this mock up, where they put workers? Yeah, there is no place for workers. <laughs> the first meaning of the noun uh, communitas and of its corresponding adjective. Uh, communist is what becomes uh, meaningful from the opposition to what is proper. In all neo uh, Latin languages, though not only, common, commun, commun, comuri <laughs> is what is not proper, uh, that begins uh, where what is proper ends. Quote commune cum alio est decinit es proprio <laughs> is what belongs to more than one, to many or to everyone. And therefore, is what which is public in opposition to private or general, though also collective in contrast to individual uh, particular. So the vision is basically the kind of a typical corporate yeah. development. Yeah, kind of similar to that. And then it also pushes out. So at first, like the workers will go from the factory for sure. Then now we kind of take their place kind of we I don't know because like now there is this place we, you have we go there you have parties techno parties it helps to involve uh, investors yeah yeah and then parties, at certain points, festivals help, helps to involve 
investors and we are all like an institution. Yeah, for them, but I think it's not for, I mean, not for festival organizers. I think they really no. believe they, what they, in what they do. They really believe that they, or they really want at least, uh, want to change something. I don't, I'm not sure they believe still that they actually would be able to change anything, something. I don't know whether it works still have the uh, But at least they really want, and when they started this festival, and this initiative generally, and this Metal Up, uh, uh, Metal Up Place, at least, um, kind of following our conversations. It feels like that they really believe that they could change something. Buildings and call this uh, complex uh, forest palette. This, this, this art, so it's... Then maybe we could change this uh, final vision, how the place would be, make it more inclusive, make it more sensitive towards like um, the local, I don't know, districts, local environment. Uh, you know. This is the gift that one gives because one must give and because one cannot not give. It has a tone so clearly of being obliged as to modify or even to interrupt the one-to-one -one correspondence of the relation between the gift giver and the recipient. And is it really something positive? Uh, is it a good? Is it a wealth? Uh, interest, perhaps? Dictionaries provide us with a clear answer, despite their warning that we aren't dealing with a certified uh, meaning. They do tell us that the ancient and presumably originary meaning of com communist had to be he who shares the office, a border, burden, 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 a task. But the organization, the Promote Innovation Project, for them, it's, I think they kind of consider this festival in a different way. And for them, maybe it's a sort of an euphemism, yeah, when there is like, maybe not an euphemism, I don't know if I'd say that, but it's a certain theme that kind of can make your project look and appear better, you know, that you are not just another real estate developer, you're not just another jerk, you know. The subjects of community are united by an obligation, in the sense that we say I owe you something, but not you owe me something. This is what makes them not less than the masters of themselves. A circuit of mutual gift given that finds its own specificity in its indirectness with respect to the frontal nature of the subject-object relation or to the ontological fullness of the person if not in the daunting semantic duplicity of the French persona, uh, which can mean both person and no one. Therefore, the community cannot be thought of as a body or as a corporation in which individuals are founded in a larger individual. Neither is community to be interpreted as a mutual intersubjective recognition in which individuals are reflected in each other so as to confirm their initial identity as a collective bond that comes at a certain point to connect individuals uh, that before were separate. I mean, also with the text, is on the one having... Oh, I'm sorry, maybe it's this? No, 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 it is. Oh, wait. Yes, there is something loose. I think oh. it's... Oh. Uh, <laughs> this guy who we were reading is alive or dead? <laughs> yeah, it's like now the, the magic happened. <laughs> I think especially when it comes to this more like urban practice and community projects, I think there is uh, a bit uh, of um, ungrounded uh, like this optimism and that there is not always like people don't look at the other side mm -hmm. and you know like there's certain like bullet points what does it mean to be community and work as community but we don't challenge them and i think this is important perspective you know to like to rethink yeah yeah, yeah. this is the thing this is the thing that in the end they still bring this uh this mock up you know they still they already have this vision of what they want to do but then why do we need to have this metal up but yeah it's a preparation basically that's right so it's, it's just try to appear as like this uh, capitalist but with a human like social you know social social you know face. Uh, yeah, and that's really uh, what, what what makes me uh, so frustrated. Well, yeah.
I love all these things about like really intense knowledge sharing <laughs> and the knowledge of others. I mean, I, I'm also of course fascinated because all these people, I mean, the philosophers, the art historians, they all cite, cite, cite. I, we always only cite others that we don't know. <laughs> and I yeah. think there's some, yeah. some also the continuity of, of this process of working with text that I uh, appreciate the fact that we share this moment of sharing just a moment and carving out this moment of just reading out loud when do we do it not, not anymore mm. it's also creating a space of learning together that we know from school from university but I mean this process of ordering for me this is a way of experiencing it with a small group mm. as a single person really nice. voila thank you for bearing with me <laughs> no thank you I really really enjoy it It's really great. Can I keep this? The man that is open of heart to his neighbor and stops to consider his likes and dislikes. His blood shall be wholesome whatever his labor. His luck shall be with him whatever he strikes. The splendor of morning shall duly possess him that he may not be sad at the falling of eve. I actually I was skeptical enough in the way that I'm not I I, will, I was not sure that it could change my perception of the project and my maybe thoughts about this project and what I already know about them but actually reenactment uh, helped help us to see these events from inside and it's really changed a lot our perception of and understanding what happened during the previous events they like it yes <laughs> Then we had another reenactment, which was in one of the courtyards. We were showing the Gendus movie, we were reenacting Scream. First of all, it's an incomplete film, I mean, it, uh, and it is called uh, The Slow Documentary of a Fast Life. Uh, and it's um, completely experiential. Uh, there are very few dialogues. Even I recorded them today itself. <laughs> So it's a premiere, pre premiere. Mm -hmm. pre no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the first time somebody will see other than me. Let's go. Have a small screen then. Really small.